Hi there and welcome to 272analytics.com's tutorial on the Kaplan-Meier estimator in Stata. Now if you have worked at all in uh, epidemiology, in public health, in um, any discipline that draws on survival analysis, you probably will already be familiar with the Kaplan-Meier estimator and your interest might just be to find out uh, how to generate both the graph and the table in Stata, in which case this tutorial will help you. If you're interested in sort of the very, very basics of the Kaplan-Meier estimator or let's say a mathematical perspective on it, this won't be the best tutorial for you as there will be an assumption that you already know some of the foundation and we're taking an applied rather than purely mathematical approach today. That said, in order to generate the Kaplan-Meier estimator, we need some data. And I'm going to basically do something unfair here. I've already gone ahead and created a data set here using some randomized commands and I'm just copying in the code here that I've highlighted so that I can mock up this data set without having to use any of the Stata data sets and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is my philosophy is to show you uh, different features in Stata code every time there's a tutorial so that you might have come to learn about a specific function but you leave with an understanding of another. I think that's that's great for learning anything. and. Second, um, I like the freedom to generate, you know, sort of longer data sets than what Stata has to show you the Kaplan-Meier estimator in particular. Uh, this code is available from 272analytics.com. If you're to visit and search the page for the Kaplan-Meier estimator, uh, you'll find it. You needn't replicate what I'm doing. I think I'm just, um, I'm putting up this code here for purposes of replication for those people who are really interested in the nuts and bolts of Stata and who would like to be able to do this on their own. However, you might not really care about that and you might just care about the code uh, that is going to be applied to your own data set. So I'm sensitive to both of those needs and uh, hopefully we'll meet them here. So I very quickly using the set seed command because I generated random numbers earlier. Set seed is a way to generate the same random numbers no matter how many times you run random number commands. As long as you know what the kind of key is here for set seed and you duplicate that, you get the same random numbers back. I've created a hundred observations that are empty here. I've created a vari variable ft that's eventually going to be my fail time variable. And these are all commands to just fill that with some mock data that are sequential in nature and that take a specific format that you're going to see in a minute. And I'm generating another variable here that I'm calling fail, which is the number of people at each stage. And I'm just going to run all, all these commands here. Um, and these are just to get you to the data set. Very soon you're going to see the actual Kaplan-Meier command. So here we have our data set. We have fail time and fail. So let's say that th this data set pertains to uh, cancer. And we might be interested in the number of people who have a recurrence of cancer and fail time could be months and fail could be the number of people at any month uh, monthly measurement who are observed to have a recurrence of cancer after not having it so that's what we're interested in now I'm gonna to run two very important commands here that are going to be of universal interest um, so you need to watch these carefully the first thing is we cannot generate a Kaplan-Meier estimator without st setting these data. And so we're going to use the st set command followed by fail time because that's our variable uh, of interest. So whenever you use st set, fail time has to be the fail time variable, which could be called a lot of other stuff, really. Um, I called it fail time because it's just the best way of advertising what actually is in that variable. Then comma and fail is the command to tell Stata what the variable is that's tracking the number of people who fail at each step of uh, fail time. And once again, for ease of naming, I call that variable fail as well. So you enter this, this code and you follow it by STS list. And now we have our Kaplan-Meier estimator table. So we start here with the time. Time goes on. As time goes on, people fail, meaning that they get cancer and of course or have a recurrence of cancer and once you have a recurrence of cancer you, you kind of drop out you're no longer measured and someone else who has a recurrence of cancer then gets measured here so time goes on and the failures add up 
and let's say you start out with here for example it says the beginning total here for for 20 um, at time 20 everyone was a survivor or, uh, or let me put it another way Every, no one had had a recurrence of cancer yet so the time to failure really begins at let's say month 20 now the distribution could take any form but I'm just walking through what I've done here you have a survivor function and that again is the proportion of people who are alive uh, at any one fail time and as you can see this goes down uh, I beg your pardon I said alive but you know here again we talked about recurrence of cancer so the survivor function would refer to the proportion the proportion of people who have not had a recurrence of cancer that's what a survivor function means anyone who hasn't experienced the failure event as you've dis defined it in your data set you have a confidence interval and you have this table now the best way to understand this more and to get really use out of this table is to turn it into a graph so we're going to use the command STS graph comma uh, and I've just gone ahead and highlighted um, this code here you don't you needn't do what I've done uh, you could also just say STS graph but I've done all this because um, I had a lot of months here in my fail time and I want to be able to see those on the graph so that I can kind of cross refer to them and what I've asked is for Stata to label the fail time in increments of five starting from zero and going all the way up to 150 and comma alternate basically just makes it more readable on the graph and then close parentheses uh, CI means I'm adding a confidence interval so now let's see what that looks like let me bring it over for you here so there is your Kaplan Meier survival estimate so as I said uh, you know one here everyone uh, or let me put it another way no one has yet failed and notice that up to month 20 here if you track that up uh, the line is flat at one so you have you know all survivors here now starting at month 20 uh, people start to experience the failure event which as we described it was a recurrence of cancer and as that goes you see the survival estimate going down because of course you have a lower and lower proportion of survivors at each stage because cumulatively they are being afflicted by the uh, fail failure event here you have a pretty long period of time where it was uh, kind of flat here from let's see I guess around month 50 to month 85 or so is that uh, about a quarter of the population uh, the sample uh, experienced a failure event they had a recurrence of cancer but then for a long time no one had a recurrence of cancer as you can see because the lines flat and then it started again over here so that's an interesting distribution um, looking at the shape of a Kaplan Meier distribution can give you a lot of insight into uh, you know the dynamics of a, of a failure event and we're going to explore that uh, in, in a moment here additionally um, this blue stuff over here the coloring is the 95 percent confidence interval as you can see can be quite broad and if you're comparing Kaplan Meyer survival estimate and graphs for different treatments as we're about to do uh, you need these confidence intervals so you can very easily see the overlaps uh, note by the way that my use of the alternate syntax just did this it, it staggered the analysis time so it wasn't all like crowded together um, which I think is a useful thing to do so let's go ahead and close that out and now I'm going to do something else uh, I'm going to generate a new variable call I'm gonna call it treatment and it's gonna take on uh, values of either one or two and we can kind of verify that over here if you look on the right I've generated it here and let's say that for example treatment one is a certain kind of chemotherapy drug and perhaps treatment two is something else uh, maybe it's a control uh, maybe it's uh, an operation or some alternate type of chemotherapy it, it could really be anything um, what I just want to show you is when you go ahead and get the Kaplan Meier estimate you can just type in here in table format uh, STS list comma by and in parentheses this variable name for treatment which again I've called treatment so it's easy to understand now what you have here is something really interesting you get your table but you get it for both treatment one and treatment two now 
um, unless you're John von Neumann or someone like that, you're not really going to see all of these numbers and, and see a pattern and understand what they mean. So what you need to be able to do now is create that Kaplan-Meier graph again, except in a format where you've added uh, by treatment. And the reason I've done that is so we can kind of compare the survival functions of these two treatments. And once again, I have CI here at the end so I can see the confidence intervals. Otherwise, it's the same code that I used earlier. So I'm just going to do that. And now here we have the uh, survival um, estimates here for treatment one, which is uh, blue, and treatment two, which is red. And as you can see here, there's um, there's quite an overlap. Uh, so we would we would not really have any reason to conclude that the survival estimates are any different for treatment one and treatment two. And that's by design. I, I created the treatments randomly and distributed them that way. In the real world, it could be the case that the survival estimates uh, differ quite a bit, depending on whether you have, let's say, a treatment versus an absence of treatment, you know, or something of that kind. My interest was more just showing you the syntax here so that you can see that adding by treatment and of course remembering to append CI over here gives you very usable graphic of the tabular Kaplan-Meier data that we generated up over here with the STS list command. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and I would like to invite you to visit 272analytics.com for access to all our free statistics tutorials in Stata, SPSS, R, eViews, and Minitab. Here at 272analytics.com we provide data consulting primarily to graduate students. Therefore we work very closely with you in order to perfect your chapter 3 and chapter 4. That means helping you design surveys, uh, getting your data input, assisting you with fashioning appropriate research questions and hypotheses, uh, getting your data, extracting them, transforming them, cleaning them, uh, putting them through analysis, uh, interpreting them, explaining them to you so that at the end of the day, you know exactly what story your data tell, why they matter, what they mean in a manner that lets you write a, a perfect chapter four uh, following a perfect chapter three and lets you defend your dissertation or thesis with complete confidence. We provide ethical consulting. It's not a writing service, so you will be responsible for taking our blueprint, our assistance, our consulting, and transforming them into an appropriate academic project for yourself. I'd also like to remind you that we provide the same services to undergraduate students who are working with quantitatively oriented assignments. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.